What's up, Packers fans? Welcome back to another edition of Beer and Ball. I'm Aaron Nagler with Cheesehead TV, joined as always by Billy Schmid, 97.3 The Game. Billy, how the hell are you this week, bud? I'm great, Nags. Uh, I have not thought of any. Well, I've thought of some things to try to rile up the fan base, kind of like Aaron Rodgers did yesterday. Oh, man. But I got my Milwaukee Bucks sweatshirt on. I couldn't find the same one that Aaron's got on. But come on. Oh, very good. Very good. Let's let's be a unified family, a unit. (laughs) And uh, and let's go. Let's go kick some Buffalo Bills. uh, Well, keep it. All right. All right. Slow down. Slow down. (laughs) cover that number first we got a we got a long way to go before we get there but uh, let's let's look back at this uh debacle against the commanders it's interesting to me when all week the the drum beat was about the offensive line right and the terrible performance against the jets and Mm -hmm. you cut you come into the weekend thinking all right they got to do something right and then you get the news about Bakhtiari being added to the injury report on Saturday, and you think, oh, boy. But I will say, I was impressed with the fact that they didn't scrap whatever they had planned, and they put Zach Tom in there at left tackle, and away they went. Totally. And for the most part, i got to say, I think they held up pretty damn well. Now, Aaron Rodgers getting the ball out of his hands in less than three seconds almost every single play certainly helps mm-hmm. uh, in, in the Definitely. pass pro aspect of things. But overall... Man, that I thought that's the line we, we should have seen weeks ago. Well, and the part of it too, Nags, is they had enough trust in the dude behind, who's a fourth round rookie who we saw play all over the place, to go right. on out and start again against Montez Sweat. Like that's that's no uh Detroit in <laughs> impersonation, if you want to right. use a Paul Allenism from a, a number of years ago. Amazing. I mean, that's a tough unit to be able to go and start your first game against. And and I also think the part of moving Elton back to left guard is the I think it's the under underlying part of all this where they say, yeah. all right, where are you absolutely best? Right. Because people believe just bump him on over one. Right. He'd never played right guard in the NFL. So you want to be able to stabilize that and at least have one side when Dave is healthy, be as dominant as you believe it could be to. God forbid, hopefully run the ball that way oh, uh, quite a goodness. few times oh, in November wow. and December. Again, we got we got a lot on that no, bone, too. Long way to go. <laughs> but, man, I, I I thought John Runyon played well over on the other side Agreed. as well. Agreed. Um, I, I think Yash uh, played like a guy that hasn't played as much as right. recently. Uh, he mm-hmm. was a little bit rusty and in a spot that and, he had played out of position. I mean, out of position. The tackle almost entirely his entire almost, pro career, so. Which, again, goes back to the preseason and the way they handled the Royce Newman thing. Like, if you knew that this yep. could be a possibility, why was he not playing over there at right tackle during training camp? But we're not ripping up those scars. We're three and four. No. We got to look forward. I thought that unit had one of its best games of the year. So in without their, their main horse, and like you said, two days, 48 hours, less than probably, to find out he's not going to be able to go, wow. Well, and for Zach Tom to get the call, in the morning of the game and say, you're going like, this is your first NFL start. I mean, that's, and I know they repped him there during practice during the week in anticipation of just in case, et cetera. But you know, those weren't significant reps. You know what I mean? Like they weren't giving him the lion's share of reps. Those were going to Dave and for, you know, young Zach Tom to go out there and perform the level he did. um, And look, I, it feeds into something else. The, you talk about the running game and the lack thereof, et cetera. And I know Matt quibbled with some of the what they call were went down as runs in the scoring sheet. And I guess Aaron Jones should have had two more runs in the tally. So fine. OK, we'll give you that. <laughs> um, but it was interesting to me to hear him kind of somewhat admit that they have been in the shotgun so much, especially in this last game yep. because of Aaron Rodgers thumb. And they don't, you know, getting under center. And I, look, and I know that people think that's like a like kind of silly thing but i'm telling you as someone who just played quarter quarterback at a very 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 low rudimentary level those snaps are no joke man they fire that ball they're told to fire that ball up in there and you do that repeatedly yeah one of those you know at a pro level josh meyer like throwing it up back into your thumb again and again and again yeah i can understand why they have him back in the gun right i will say though i am so so over the zone runs out of the gun uh give me the draws give me the pin and pull give me some more angle blocking Mm -hmm. anything anything other than the zone runs because for whatever reason now maybe it is because they're 
out of this game anyway, because of a new makeup for the offensive line, not quite as many reps together in their current positions, et cetera. But whoo, baby, every time they start going horizontal, I get, I just get nervous. My heart drops rather than firing out, firing off and getting up. Feet. Sure. Well, in, in Nags, the, the under center part, I, I also like going more to gun, just like in the standardized way of kind of running an offense. That being said, mm -hmm this offense doesn't call for it as much, right? Like, so that's why I thought the line of questioning was super fair towards Matt. And I think he kind of understood it. He didn't like it. He didn't necessarily. like it. He, he didn't it. like it, yep. but he understood yep. it that Agreed. the way that we've all watched this offense be run with Kyle over in first Washington and now right, right. into San Francisco, the way LA runs it, it's so predicated off the ball being hidden for those four to five yards where under center, you can't see the football. If you're a mm -hmm. defense, that's the biggest part of the deception of it. I also wonder if some of their youth is why they've also tried not to tweak it, right? Like, couldn't right, you, right. in theory, make a lot of the same deceptive plays, the same running schemes out of pistol instead of under center? And I, I mean, we get weedy. I had here, a but couple, I mean, it's funny you say that though. Weedy, it's beer and ball, baby. That's what yeah, we do. it's, but um, it's, it's, but it's kind of like what they did in 14. And, that. Exactly. Have him back there in the pistol mm -hmm. where there's a few more options as far as, I mean, I'm not going to say that's like going to solve everything or anything like that, but I, it feels like to your point, it feels like a, at least meeting it halfway, right. To try sure. and at least yep. marry up some of that run action that you can then turn into a boot or some kind of play action mm -hmm. but that was so successful for them when Matt first got into town. And for whatever reason, it has really disappeared this year. Well, and, and let's also, people don't like bringing up the big guy who's now in Dallas. Who's got a nice little squad. That was one, that was one thing Mike does deserve some credit for a was when time. was in 2014, when they were hampered by the inability to really move calf because injury, of the calf yeah, injury. 100%. They, they implemented a lot of pistol because they had a downhill guy in Lacey downhill dude and aj dylan and especially if you're going i'm to, not saying i'm just saying yeah but also if you're going to give aj dylan a bunch of carries maybe that's the way that they start to focal focus on it otherwise yep. man you got to have those two guys into the backfield again and you got to have some of that motion behind aaron to at least give a forward lean into the outside game because to your point when they're just setting up at five five and a half yards away they're not getting any movement at on all. that wide zone and they're going to be a wide zone team. So you got to try to, you got to try to meet it halfway somehow. Somehow. It's that being said, too. they're also like sixth in the league in yards per carry, I think. So well, we're quibbling yeah. with it, but they're at least close to what we kind of want them in theory to be doing. So and here's the thing though, is because it, they just seem to get spooked, whether that's Matt or Aaron or a combination, Great but way to put they it. have a few, they have a few unsuccessful runs and it's over. It's all over. Now, Part of that uh, coming out of this game is, you know, the other kind of aspect of it with a problematic part of it. Uh, it's twofold, right? You're constantly again and again and again, getting put in second and long because of penalties, because of mm -hmm. a holding call or a motion call, you know, uh, illegal formation, blah, blah, blah. Those are tough to overcome. And that takes you out of a lot of your run game, obviously, but then not converting on third down. What were they? Oh, for six. I think the only yeah. third downs they can, converted the entire game were due to penalty yep so if you're not converting on third down you're not extending drives and giving yourself an opportunity to run the ball more right so i understand that kind of folds in on itself and takes away the opportunities to actually pound the rock so to speak but oh yeah man i'm telling you just one or two bad runs and they get okay now now we're just going to run the solution our way out of this it drives me nuts well, and I think also it's it's a lot of what we've talked about from a number of their games where I don't know if it's Matt. I don't know if it's a combination of Matt and Aaron, but when the game somewhat gets away from them, yes. time of possession wise, yep, not even as much score wise nags, it's right. possessions and time of possession. They feel like they got to play catch up. And yep. in a number of these games, you're tied. You're one score away or one score. And off. you even don't score down. It's need like, what to you... stress. You just don't have the ball. Yep. And I think yeah. that's where that's where they that's where the panic starts to set in. We don't have the rock. We're not in control. We've played from ahead so much, and we're a good team playing from ahead. We got to right. get back ahead. We got to start throwing the ball. We got to launch it down. And and then you mentioned <laughs> illegal formation, right? Um, right. Holding consistently, holding, right. right? Wow, those sound like mental mistakes. 
I don't know. Yeah, I, they do. I mean, yeah, some, they do. Some sound like mental mistakes. Oh, well, no, okay. I, I was going to say, I, I, I will say, I said this on daily. I, holding, that's going to happen, right? Holding calls happen. happen. Yep. Lots of times. Especially when you effective. haven't played much, like Yash. And you haven't played Yash, like Yash at that new position, et cetera. Yep. A guy makes a move, you instinctually grab at him. That's going to happen. I don't kill a guy for that. But false starts, illegal, you know, two guys in motion at the same time, not covering up a guy at the end of the line of scrimmage. Like, all of that shit, Come on, pre-snap mental mistakes, those are the things that, man, and look, let's talk about it. Like Aaron Rodgers, quote, calling out his teammates on McAfee, I got zero problem with it. I have no problem with it whatsoever because it is so readily apparent. And that's, I mean, those are just mental things. How about hold on to the fucking ball? How many drops do they have in this game? And I know people want to talk about Aaron's accuracy or lack thereof. And yes, no question. There were some throws that were very off, especially that third down throw to Dobbs that is, you know, basically at his ankles, right? Sailed one totally earlier in the game. Yep. Understand that. But I'll put up Rogers like off throws versus the drops, and you still got plus like six drops, probably. You know? So if you just hold on mm -hmm. to one or two of those, you're extending drives, possibly putting up more points. Man, so yeah, if you're Aaron Rodgers, I, I kind of get it. I kind of understand when you're seven games into this and you're like, how many more weeks of this stuff do I have to like kind of deal with as a four time MVP? Yes. He's back there trying to make this offense work and they can't get out of their own way. Yeah. And, and Nags, I don't know. I don't, I don't really lean in and I don't agree with Trent Dilfer all that much, but I heard him uh, speaking to Colin <laughs> Cowherd a little bit about it yesterday. Right. right. And, uh, and that, that clear. group will, will ruffle up a couple of feathers. Um, I agree <laughs> though, that Aaron at this point in his career doesn't need to have a babysitting job. All right. Like at this right. point going into what most likely is probably his final year. And now we're sitting into week eight. This isn't the time to be worried about, um, the emotional feelings of, of all the teammates. Right. This is no, to start it's, feeling about the, it ain't show the, friends. It's the show football business. team, right? A hundred percent. Right. It's show business. I love the way you said that. And right. the other part of it is. The intricacies of each and every play, the, the timing routes, the one to Dobbs, I still don't know if maybe he was in the wrong spot, potentially, as to where he was supposed to be on the third down. Either way, it's a shitty throw. You can't make that mistake. Right. And I think nope. a lot of this is all cleared up by one statement before of, hey, man, I got I to gotta be able to overcome some of this stuff and play better. Simply put yep. as that. Because then you can't clip that out, right? But right. now, right. the way that it headlines across every single network, Oh, on Lord. five, six, ten, and wake up and right. get up, you know <laughs> that it's going to be focal pointed and centered around you being a dick. So yeah, in right. a time where I think, and we don't know, Air Nags, which is the funniest part, we don't know how many other guys in the locker room are thinking some of the same things. Same exact things. I mean, I Aaron Rodgers is the only one that Aaron can Rogers say it says and it. Be heard. Yep, 100%. And, and look, I mean, it's funny to me that you know, the, you brought up the Dilfer thing, which I thought it, it was fascinating to me. It's like, we've got to go get him some dudes. Well, who are the dudes you're talking about? What are their contracts? Like, good uh, luck. This, yeah, good you know, luck. Aaron Rodgers signing a $50 million contract didn't happen in a vacuum. Like, there are repercussions from that. You know, mm -hmm. it's not oh, yeah. like, okay, well, you wanted to bring back Devondre Campbell and Russell Douglas. Great. We're really happy about it. Douglas had a huge Where game. Where was that money a really coming from? Game. Campbell had a big pick six. But help mm -hmm. them potentially you know, take the lead, etc. So you know you got guys making plays that got paid, etc. But then the quarterback couldn't take thirty million. Quarterback couldn't take forty million. Had to get fifty million. Like okay, but then yes, sure. the, the the trickle down effect is well, it's real difficult to go out and pay top dollar for free agent wide receivers. Now all of that said, I wouldn't be surprised if they went out and got a Corey Davis from the Jets or. I know I've heard Jerry Judy bandied about. I, I'd be surprised if they made that move. And, Maybe and that's going cool. But a trade would not surprise me, given the style of offense they seem hell-bent on trying to play. I also don't know, and to your point, like where's, where's the money coming from cap-wise? You also have to have a dancing partner. DJ Moore is a great example, right? Right. Who who right. wouldn't love to who wouldn't love to go get DJ Moore? Who would also not like to have just traded away somebody who they gave a nineteen and a half million dollar signing bonus to seven months ago? 
right. A guy who's about to a guy who's about to f- uh, fire a coach or sorry, just did who he's got to pay yeah. 62 freaking million dollars to. Right. Like, so <laughs> you got to have a dance partner in some of these things. And, right. and to your point, like, where are the monster vet dudes coming from? People get a little bit clouded because of the Odell Beckham situation last year. Yep. He, he didn't cost you anything. He was yep, going to free agent. Packers thought he Packers thought they he could they could get him for six hundred and sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> that didn't well, work. Sorry, somebody well, had right. four point two to throw on up. Right, wasn't going to happen. Yep. But like you have to be able to give up a certain price to mm-hmm. a dancing partner that's willing to apparently give you a wide receiver who's going to walk on in, help you out immediately. Oh, and is on a rookie deal. Well, there's a lot of those just growing on trees that you I mean, really want to bring on into the football program. Exactly. There, there, there aren't a whole lot. And if he's on a rookie deal, is Rodgers just going to trust him blindly? Like, that's the other thing. No, that's like, going to go really well. There's the yeah. whole quarterback aspect to this of, like, how he wants to play and who he trusts and who he wants to – the type of guy he wants to throw to. Um, I thought, actually, Spoon had a good column about it in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel today. If you guys haven't heard that or read it, check it out. It's really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um. It's funny, though. You're talking wide receivers. Okay. It's so blazingly obvious, right, that Amari Rodgers needs to be taken off punt return. But can we get him yeah. a few more snaps from scrimmage? I understand he, like, couldn't quite bring in the, the the scramble drill throw up the right sideline, right? Would have been a big play, no doubt about it. But that's not what I need out of Amari Rodgers. I need Amari Rodgers to fill the Randall Cobb role of, okay, mm-hmm. I'm going to catch the ball. Yep at the line of scrimmage, essentially make two guys miss and get a first down. He did that. There was another one on a second down where, you know, Rogers fires it low and behind him. He catches it and brings up a third and short. Like I, the, yes, more of that. Like I don't mm-hmm. need him to be a number one. I need him to be a productive hell possession guy. If you want slot dude, if you prefer, but someone who is on the field regularly to make those types of plays, this offense could use it. So I, I understand the calls to, like, oh, get him off punt return. 100% agree. But can we get him some more snaps? Amen. Totally. Please? Yeah. Like, it seems well, to me and, that and, he's ready to help. Yeah, and, and the other part of it is, Nags, like, a, as much as, oh, it would be great to have a big play wide threat, it would be great to have mm-hmm. somebody that you can lean into for eight, nine catches a game. No shit. Everybody would love to have that <laughs> yeah. guy. But this is also 10 quarters away, right? We're 10 quarters removed from, I think, the way the Packers passing offense is supposed to look right first half of that Giants game they complete balls to eight or nine different receivers they were extremely efficient 18 of like 24 throughout I mean now that could be like three quarters worth of production instead of a half but (laughs) right that being said that's the way that they're going to have to play that's the way they know they have to play so now they got to be able to get back to it and have some success that way they got to be able to not allow the game to get away from them bring some confidence in, I think, the way they play, and maybe lean in on what could get you there. And we've talked about it for a while. A couple more opportunities to run the football, but well, a few more. I don't think a few more. I don't think it's as it's not as far away as three and four feels. And maybe it's just why this week makes it so much more daunting. But it feels like they're a lot further away than I think they actually are. I totally agree. I mean, well, especially when you're talking about Washington possibly being a get right game coming into it. And then they open up the game by giving Aaron Jones, the football, a whole bunch and they score a touchdown and you're thinking, okay, here we go. And then the same script unfolds. And it's interesting too, because I heard uh, Kuhn on, on his show earlier this week Mm -hmm. talking about how they seem to do an excellent job coming up with their openers, right? The first 12, 15 plays seem to be really effective, but after that, it really feels like they're kind of just treading water, searching for stuff. And man, I'm telling you that fourth and one to Dobbs, that is the, for me, the crystallization of thinking uh, X's and O's instead of Jimmy's and Joe's the old adage, you know, the old coaching adage. It's like, think players, not sure. plays like right there. They're thinking yep. play. They want Aaron Rodgers in the gun, firing it, etc. You've got AJ Dillon. You've got Aaron Jones. They are literally your two best players. Fourth and one, you need a yard. Give them the ball. Yes, the whole stadium knows they're going to get it. Give them the ball. This yeah, is and, me and quintessential kind of the, one of the big, big problems with this offense across the board. Well, in isn't it sometimes that simple? Like, 
I'm not saying Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon are are Kobe or Michael <laughs> Jordan or give it right. to whatever NBA team's best player you want it to go to. Everybody in the stadium knows the ball's going to that guy. It's the time yep. for that dude to be able to execute it. I think we're getting closer to that though. And I think the Elton Jenkins move to left guard kind of puts that together, right? They'll be like, well, we have true. two dudes hope. that we believe are going to be able to move for sure, that we're yep. not going to have to be worried about <clears throat> Bryce Newman. Uh, <laughs> stepping potentially the wrong way and us having yeah. something get tossed, uh, somebody get tossed completely aside. And maybe that gets leaned into a little bit more. I do stress maybe, though, because it depends on who they believe Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan is, because generally that's talked about 12. And yeah, the, the fourth and one is a great. It, isn't it just a perfect representation of how the season has gone? You're sitting there. Uh, per, I mean, if Lord. one block here's is the thing. made, it's. But here's Man the on grass. Like, but that's the thing, too. It's I, I don't even think it's a screenplay like that. I think Watkins is supposed to be off to the races there. And I think Rogers just pulls the trigger so quickly Immediately that goes. You know, the defense, the defense comes up on it because they see the ball out. And, you know, it's a tough play for Dobbs. Yeah, you'd like him to hold on there. But like you're getting hit basically instantly as you're catching it. But if Rogers just like holds it a tick, Sammy Watkins is screaming free, probably walks in for a TD. And well, like, Earlier in the game, the he had the same thing with Watkins. They showed it on yes. Sunday Night Football. Yep. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's the thing. It's like if if they're going to run it through Rodgers, Rodgers has got to play within the structure of the offense and stop like just trying to, quote, make things happen. Like his quick release, the sidearm thing. Like we all know you can do it, man. We all have seen it. We all know. But just if if he's going to if they're going to insist and it seems they are on running it through 12 instead of Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, that he's got to produce man he's got to come yeah. up in those moments mm -hmm. and, and so far has been few and far between and that's where you know going back to the the wide receiver thing i saw your clip saying if they are going to insist on throwing the ball you know 60 65 to 70 percent of the time man you got to go upgrade out there because i think so dude right? lazard's walking around in a sling i can't imagine that's <laughs> going to go very well coming up nope. on sunday night Right. Uh, no. Randall Cobb's not coming back for another three to four weeks. Who knows about Christian Watson? Cause he hasn't practiced at all. So at that point you do you, then you, then you owe it, I think. And that's where I think the, the grand arching, uh, conversation of the whole 2022 season is right. If you well, think this is his last year, then I think you for sure have to do it. Well, and that's the thing, like, where are they in their connection between personnel and coaching? Right. Like, because if Brian doesn't make a move and they continue to try to play offense the way they have been, I mean, oh, that man. tells you all you need to know about. Yeah. No matter what they say, no matter what they talk about publicly, mm -hmm. that's a pretty significant disconnect. And that's a statement being made about the football team from the front office. It would uh, pretty much that would be a I statement mean, as to where we think we are. We've given you what we think, you know, is needed, and we've supplied you with what we think is, you know, enough, so to speak, mm -hmm. to play winning football, but you refuse to utilize what we've given you, essentially. Yeah. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I, I don't, and I'm not trying to stir shit up here. I'm just saying, like, I don't listen to what they say. Watch what they do. So that's it's, why I'm like, if the, we've gotten this far, and it's so clear they need help at receiver, like you just mm -hmm. said, they're down so many guys because of injury. You kind of have to go get someone if you want to continue to play the style that you're playing. Yeah, and and to that point, next, I don't think it's a I don't think it's a damning statement as many would say of oh well then you're sh saying your young players aren't going to be able to get it done. No, nope, I nope, disagree. Not at all. Completely, totally completely disagree. No, nope. it says that Christian Watson, dude, that's tough, man. That you are hurt. Guess what? Next year you're going to come back better than ever. All yeah. right. We're going to figure it out. We're going to get you right. And maybe he gives him something down the stretch. Who knows? Yeah, you know? and, and but maybe to your then, point. Guy hasn't been on the field for two weeks now. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't put him on IR, but like I am too. The whole and what's interesting is the whole offense is completely different when he's on the field. And he doesn't even need is. to get the ball, but it's completely different. And that's yes. wild to me for this rookie who obviously you see the traits, you see the athleticism, speed, uh -huh. explosiveness, etc. But he bear you know, he gets like what a couple, you know, uh end arounds a, a game. But man, that speed threatens you in a way as a defense that you have to honor it. And it just changes everything. Yeah, his speed is special, dude. I mean, seeing it and and seeing it in action, then seeing it up close, it's mm -hmm. he's got something, and and they got something there. They just have to be they have to be cautious with it. So I think that's where that's where more and more 
the stress of them having to go and do something if if they're going to keep playing this way. And and maybe, hey, Bears just did it. They just said, you know what? To hell with it. All right. You we know, can't throw Getsy, the ball. If, we can't do if this. We got to run. The, can we come to run Jesus. Lafleur and Rogers can come to Jesus as well. Yeah. And there's I'm plenty of time my, for it. I'm not. He said, I'm not holding my breath. No, well, I'm not holding my breath on that one at all. At all. Um, hey, you know, we've talked a lot about the offense, obviously, for yeah, you know, for sure. reasons that are clear. But what about this defense? It's it's fun at times to watch them get after it. Um, I thought I loved, I think I tweeted this out. I loved Joe Barry getting Quay Walker in involved in some of these pressure packages. Mm-hmm. There were a couple, a handful of times where they legit drew up stuff where they had the end or some, you know, somebody else or the D tackle kind of crashing down on the tackle to allow him a free release off the edge. Who baby, that's fun stuff. Now you're cooking with gas. I mean, he came yep. this close a couple of times and I just, I would love to see if, a few more of those because man, let's get him in space, man. Let's use that speed and athleticism that we've all seen. We've seen it in preseason. Hell, we mm-hmm. saw it back in Georgia. I think you've seen him thinking a lot so far as rookie totally. year, which is to be expected. Right. But I think he's coming off his best game so far this year. Like not just pressuring the quarterback, but just overall, I thought he didn't overrun things. I thought he was, you know, really flying to the ball, I, overall, I thought the kid played well. And this is a game where I thought Devondre Campbell and Preston Smith really stepped up. To me, Quay mm-hmm. Walker, that's the most exciting part because if this kid starts to get it, then they're cooking with gas on defense. Well, and I don't think that it's I, – I I believe they're tied at the hip that Devondre Campbell plays better and Quay Walker has one of his best games. The other guys that played well, dude, 55, Engabare continues to oh, just be a little bit more really aggressive like each and kid. every game. Really and, like this kid. Yes. And ha- round of applause to freaking Preston Smith. Congratulations. What a game. Well- what welcome a back game. to FedEx yep. Field, dude. That dude played like he wanted <laughs> right. to uh to have something to, to mind people. Over. Yep. No, he no played well, about dude. It. He was Probably. he was big time in the way that they played. I totally agree. Um What's killing me is the amount of chances they let go through their fingertips. Big um, whether it's yep. Jair, whether it's uh, Rasul, man, they had so many chances to just kind of really, you know, take that ball away a number of times and set up the offense with a short field that just kind of went a begging. And in a game that's decided by three points, those are going to come back and haunt you. No, no doubt about it. And isn't um, it funny that uh, a lot of those chances came while they were in zone defense and were able to kind of go and be aggressive towards it and then yeah. the man the, but you know what eyes dude, on the, the quarterback man, eyes on the, the quarterback the man at the end against mclaurin that's a great yeah. call that's just yeah that's yeah. that's, pros that's just and, a great that's a great player making a great play that's making all. a great play and a you great player that you could have had in you your building of them. we had jay sternberg on, oh god how about jay sorry, tweeting that out that. That how about so jay tweeting man. that out during the game oh my god on national tight ends day come on god bless that young man God tight ends day. Day. It was. It was, it was. Tight ends day. God bless that young man. That is one of the greatest tweets of all time. How did they oh pass on McLaurin? Oh, oh my God. God. But, I mean, McLaurin beats Jair for a touchdown, and then McLaurin closes out the game with that final third down catch. I mean, those are just your best making the play. Yeah, and when Heineke's point, eyes are closed. You got exactly right with mm-hmm. the pressure in his pressure right in his face. You know, sometimes you just tip your cap and you, you know, I get people saying, well, Jair is supposed to be the best and Jair is awesome. But man, mm-hmm. again, they get paid to, they have superstars as well. And their superstar made a play and look, don't put yourself in a position where you need that. Exactly. Like, don't exactly. fumble a punt and give them a short field for three points, which by mm-hmm. the way, game was decided by three points. Yep. You know, totally. it all adds up. It all adds up. I also think I the other part, the, the other part of it is, and, and I know that as it continues to get, as we get later into the year, you're going to find more and more chances for it. Nags, the ball bounces in different ways. After yes. that, Devondre Campbell, and it sounds like it's an, it's an excuse. It kind of is. I also think it's an explanation is the mm. way that I like the other the yes, other sir. E word that I like to use for it. Man, they didn't get many bounces, and and sometimes you got to create your own bounces, and they didn't yep. they didn't create enough of them when the when it was clearly bouncing the other way after that oh. Campbell pick. I mean, the the punt at the end of the half to sit right on the half yard line. I'm like, okay, you're gonna have to right. overcome some stuff to get this W. This is not well, going and, in your and direction. Then, and then to have uh, a touchdown basically taken off the board because you get the most totally. 
BS penalty on yeah. Stokes there. Man, Stokes, let's talk about Stokes real quick. Just, man, I am not feeling it from Stokes. Ooh, this tough, has been huh? a sophomore slump year extraordinaire. Uh, look no further. That touchdown to the back in, in the red zone, I mean, where is he going on that play? Where are you going, dude? Guy's breaking out. Amos is literally right there, mm -hmm. and he sticks with him, and the back is free release into the end zone. What are we doing, man? We're, we're just week going into week eight. Yeah. How do, you, how do you let that happen? And and therein lies maybe some more mental mistakes that we're talking about. Maybe it's not yes, only sir. on the offense that we're talking about. Yes, um, you know, where a guy's picked, what a guy's making. There's there's all different details of why guys are playing. But, I mean, he has he has been uh, a difficult watch at, at times. And, and yeah. some of it, Nags, is like, is the adversity part of it. I think they had moments where I thought their defense played really really mentally tough right they had some bad breaks still held up yep and then one too many over to 21 and i think there you saw yeah. the personal foul after after that oh, um, or after the ticky tech so call that you're too. talking about yeah he let just weak things get in front of him and yep. and those are the things that you just can't have and credit to the credit to the commanders for going and picking on him right like they saw yep. that they had him a little bit a little yep. bit riled up, up and they were head. able to go and get yep. at it. Yep. And that's smart. That's smart yeah. ball, man. You got it. You got to do that. Um, all right. Well, what do you think Sunday night heading into Buffalo? Oh, I mean, what, what's the line? Was it 10 and a half? What, where, where it's are up we to at? 11 now. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're nobody's underdogs except this week. We are you know, definitely, definitely the Bills underdog. Um, look, this is a, a game where we're talking about running the ball, run the fuck out of the ball, take the oh, air God. out of this game. And to keep it out of Josh Allen's hands, I think that's obvious, which means they won't do that. They'll come out and go five wide and try to throw it all over the yard, is my guess. But why do you want Josh Allen on the field? Why do you want to go three and out? Just run no, the ball. Please don't. Please don't. I man, especially if Dave can't play and you gotta let you gotta have oh. Zach Tom blocking Von Miller. Uh oh, the the wrecking course that he's on, that's just a recipe for disaster. Um yep. I think there's a lot of times when you're a 10, 10, 12 point favorite that you sometimes look past the opponent that opponent never is wearing a green bay packers helmet right yeah, like you're in you're gonna prime get... time against aaron Rodgers. What? yeah no way they're looking past those guys at home no dude they're at gonna be home. throwing bildos all over the place out there <laughs> people are gonna be drinking since saturday oh man that's a that's a tough it's a buzzsaw that they're walking into yes it um, is and that, I don't... okay and that's and that's part of it right that initial surge of energy, and we've heard Aaron talk about this many times throughout the years, is this idea of going on the road. It's going to be a hostile environment. Mm -hmm. They got to survive like the first 10 minutes. Yes, like, totally. If they can get past the first, like without disaster striking, like, and I'm not even talking about like they got to score a touchdown right away. Just survive those first 10, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. settle into the game, and then kind of, you know, and then kind of, all right, we, we, we've survived kind of the first surge, so to speak. And that doesn't mean anything else gets easier. But no. man, so many times on the road where things can get away from you real early and you're never really in the game, just that's what I mean about button it up. Don't do anything yeah. stupid and we'll see how they handle it. I mean, I am kind of fascinated to see how aggressive they are, how buttoned up they are, how they approach. Like, you know, I've been joking all week, like surprise onside incoming because this is a game where no one expects them to win. You've got to think they're playing with a little bit of house money here. Oh, you for know, sure. They can throw whatever they want out there because no one expects them to win. I also think there's the first 10 minutes of the game, first 10 minutes of the second half, right? Like, I mean, this team is oh, not God. good. In, this team, team is not no good in the second half. So second half is is imperative to not have some, you know, 65-yard Stephon Diggs Bomb, touchdown pass right, right. to completely change the course of the next 20 minutes. But, yep. Um, yep. yeah, if they survive the initial wave in the first and second half, I think they'll stay in the game. Because I think their defense can can keep them relatively in this game. You you Ooh, watch the you think you watch, so? I don't know, man. Don't you know. you watch you watch the ninety six Packers nags. This I is did. the first. This is the first team uh, on pace to go. I'm away. Lead the I'm league, aware. Lead the league in total offense both. and total defense. Both sides uh, of the ball. That's but what I mean, Can like Kansas City nipped Green Bay. Yeah. And uh, but the, uh, now that and game that, was yep. at home, and you know, Chimura yep. was gone. And <laughs> Well, again, 
You know, I mean, you can you can slice it. There's up no correlation. Maybe the Packers here. just score 45 points, and we all are just yeah. tripping on Let's ayahuasca. Come back from La La Land, because that ain't gonna happen. But just make this a 17-20 game. That's that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, keep if it Packers close. can make this. If the Packers yep. can make this yep. a knockdown, drag out street fight, they've got a chance. But I haven't seen any street fighting from this team at all this year. So no, because you're not. That's why I'm not like, I'm not too like even cautiously optimistic about this game. I've just kind of resigned myself to how will it play out? Cause I know it's probably going to be a loss. Yeah. You go, you go into a four by four meter relay <laughs> with this team and you're going to get drummed yep. because dude, yep. they're quick, they're fast, yep. they're explosive. Yep. And yep. yeah, you gotta, you gotta muddy it up as much as you can. And, uh, and the Packers have played some muddy games the last couple of weeks. So there, there we go. There's some hell. They played it week three in Tampa. If they make a game like that, I'm in. And they got a chance. Yep, no doubt about it. And then then we're going to have a whole lot of fun on Packers OT. I think we're going to have fun regardless. Right. I'm just making want to make sure that everybody drinks a a Mountain Dew at like the start of the third quarter and hang out with us the entire time up until one o'clock. I'm all in. I can't wait. Oh, this is going to be fun. It'll be fun regardless. You're right. Either way. I'm I'm fascinated to see how it plays out. Because then we get the kiddies next week. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And Jamal Williams. Always good to see Jamal. I love it. Mm -hmm. All right, brother. This is always great. You know it. Beer and ball. Uh, Hopefully, hopefully talking to you after a victory, but I'm not holding my breath. But keep it up. Keep up the great work there at 97.3 The Game, and I will talk to you next week. You too, my brother. Later.